Yo! Happy New Year! It's your boy, Reggie, in the building. Thanks for hanging out on the channel today. First, we here at Pro Scale Models would like to thank all of our new subscribers. We, yes, we, we appreciate ya. And before we get into this video, you, if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe. Like the video. Video. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right, Wayman has weathered the size of a bulkhead. I seen him and it turned out pretty good. Hmm, just wait. Just wait till Reggie it's his turn. Anyway. Wayman, take it away. So, appreciate you, Reggie. Happy New Year's to you all. Um, I got this exact rail uh, bulkhead for Christmas. And I just wanted to weather the sides. So, I'm sanding the uh, little... Uh, nibs off that come off the sprue and next um, I am taking my utility knife and I, I done just a little bit before because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with these if I was going to actually put a hole in there but I did cut a little hole um, and kind of cut a chunk out on one of the sides um, just to, to show that maybe a, a load had come loose or maybe somebody who was loading a load on the bulkhead um, somehow crashed into the sidings but what's cool about these is that they don't come assembled and actually exact rail shared my pictures on Facebook and they were saying this is exactly what it's for is for the modeler if they choose to um, to go ahead and weather them and I knew I was going to weather it uh, even if it was already on there but so yeah I'm just taking my utility knife here and scraping and making little gouges inside that wood like it's been pretty much beat up uh, pretty good I will say be careful um, especially any new modelers um, hell, even if you're old modeler and seasoned if you will um, because the way I'm pulling this knife towards me I, I was kind of going extra slow because I didn't want to cut myself obviously but if anything, I'd say be extra careful. And so, yeah, it's kind of just what I'm doing. I'm just taking little chunks off to the side, um, showing some uh, usage, showing that the wood is getting old. It would be... Uh, beneficial if you were to look up some old bulkheads or even just old barn wood 
on the sides of barns and stuff like that. So you can get a, a understanding of what's what wood looks like when it gets old and rotted and all that stuff. Um, and here, as you can see, it's a little close up of some of the damage that I created uh, with the sides of these bulkheads. And I'll do on both sides on each piece of the uh, the wood too that came with it. And then again, here is just another close up. I think this is this one is done. The other one is done too. Um, I added a couple more holes, a couple more pieces that are missing. Um, I paid attention mainly to the sides and to the bottoms here, just so that's the stuff that gets beat up first. And so here I got uh, some best stains that I am going to use first and see which one it, it fits better. You know, so I got murky brown here. I had some black I just showed, um, London fog. And so these pieces of wood came in a, a sprue. Uh, they're laser cut pieces of wood and it's best to test your stains and anything else out really if if you have an extra piece of scrap wood keep it so you can test it and see what happens so here i'm testing that london fog and what i found is that it just makes it look wet um, because the wood is so dark already that london fog isn't helping too much and so here i went with the murky brown which I liked a lot better. Um, I can double up on that and make it just a little darker, but that's the uh, the stain I chose. That that London fog wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, and it's just because of the wood. Like I said, is already dark. What I like. Um, these stains are really, really good. Um, I, I can't sing best praises loud enough. It's, it's just a really good stain. Um, and, and what I'm doing now is just coating very heavily the um, sides of those bulkheads with that murky brown. And you can see it's starting to warp the uh, the wood. The wood is pretty thin. Um, and when I do this with structures and houses and stuff, I usually have bracing on the back of here. But as I kept going with these, they, they kind of chilled out and flattened out a bit. And so here I got some ammo products. Um, the oil brushers and this is I want to say dark brown I believe so um, and it comes with a cool little applicator it's oil so I just dab a little bit of the oil on each of the sides um, and here I'm kind of just starting and trying to feel what it's going to look like because um, I kind of know what oils do when you thin them out and so that's what I'm dipping in the brush now some thinner to thin out that dark oil um, and I kind of want to make it fade right so wherever the wherever I dabbed that little uh, blotch of oil I'll dip my brush into some thinner and then pull away from the the actual dab um, let's see if I do it here um, sometimes I'll just splosh it around but most of the time I'm trying to drag the wet thinner and making sure it's wet because the wood is still wet also um, which helps and here yeah you can see I'm I like it to be really dark on the edges, so I put some uh, thinner, and then I just pull it just very lightly. Um, 
light pressure on the brush so I'm not really pushing down too hard. And I'm just trying to get an effect that looks like the edges soaked up water and you know it could potentially start molding and rotting pretty good. Um, and then yeah I sped up the camera a little bit um, because I didn't want to bore you all with too much of that. But as you can see, I'm doing the same thing, right? Even what it's sped up, kind of just dabbing around the edges and making sure, um, excuse me, that I'm pulling and thinning because I ultimately want to fade. It's like a haircut, right? At the top of the head, you have all the hair and then if you get a bald fade, you know, it goes from hard hair to light hair to lighter hair to lighter hair to your to your skin, your scalp. And that's kind of the only thing I want to do here. So uh, these are done. Again, they warped a little bit. Um, they were a little worse than that when I uh, got finished with all that stain and oils. But they flattened out, and so here I got some metal slag from ammo. That's a pigment, it's powders. If you don't have stuff from ammo, you can use uh, chalks uh, from like Michaels or something like that. Um, there's all types of pan pastels you can get. Um, but here I am adding on to that fade so you know I was just mentioning uh, a minute ago about fading that oil and so now I'm just taking these powders and I guess enhancing the fade if you will because um, some of those fades were and it's fine if it's a little harsh but I tended to want my fades to be a little more gradual um, a little more smooth flowing, smooth looking. So I take that powder and just, you know, gently brush alongside of the oil that I've already put on there with that fade. And again, it's a very gentle, um, stroke I'm not applying too much pressure I'm just going back and forth putting on layers and layers and layers um, I think that's one of the things I've learned as far as weathering it's a layers game and it takes time you know when, when you sit down I know for me anyway when I sit down to weather something I already know I'm gonna be there for a minute. Like, and when I say minute, I mean hours. So there's no um, real way to make this a quick thing. Um, I'm sure it gets faster uh, as you, you know, practice techniques and learn how to cut corners, if you will. You know, uh, have all your stuff set up. But overall, it's going to take some time to weather. It's, and it's just because of the layering. It, it has nothing to do with, you know, how good you are or anything like that. It's, a lot of it is just the layers. Putting on layers, waiting for stuff to dry. You can obviously get uh, a cheap hair dryer from like Walmart or the dollar store. Um, which is funny, there, there are no more dollar stores, but they're called dollar stores. Um, get you a hair dryer and kind of speed up the process between layers, but it still just takes time, y'all. That's all. Sorry for the rant, but. Um, so as you can see here, I am still putting on layer on top of layer and 
gently brushing some stuff in, you know, adding on top of layers to darken certain areas here and there, but yeah, for the most part, I love doing this stuff and I love uh, talking about it and hopefully helping, especially new folks, right? I know when I started, I had a ton of questions. Went on to YouTube and done a lot of searching. So um, there's some great groups on Facebook as well. But, you know, a lot of this stuff I want to do is for the beginner model or eh, beginner modeler. So um, it, it's not that hard for people to really get a grasp on stuff. And that's done for that one. Right. And here's the finished piece. Um, I, I went on ahead and weathered with airbrushing and some stuff for the rest of the car. Um, and I'll go over that at some point uh, in the near future. But here's the uh, finished uh, piece. This was super fun, man. Super easy, super doable. Um, on a scale from like one to 10, I would say maybe a six. Um, and that's because I know a little bit of, you know, weathering here and there, but it, it's not hard at all. This is something a novice could do. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna pass the mic back to Reggie. I do appreciate y'all, man, for real. I appreciate all the new subscribers, um, the ones that's still sticking out, hanging out. Um, I, I really do appreciate y'all. And uh, Get ready for some stuff for this uh, new year coming up. I'm going to pass the mic back to Reggie. Peace. Yeah. Yo. My boy, Wayman. That was dope. We appreciate all the love. We got some new sponsors out there on Patreon. So, yo, check us out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Time. Next time. Next time. Peace.